would also talk to you about my final thoughts on the Big Skies canvas bedroll. Now, the Big Skies canvas is made here in the United States. I have reached out to them and uh, told them my personal opinion on the bag. And Big Skies, if you're watching, thank you for making this product at a reasonably affordable price. I've never gotten wet in this in conjunction with a good tarp, and it has kept my gear and myself dry on some very, very rainy days under the tarp. So thank you so much, if you're watching this, for making a quality product that I can rely on time and time again. For the past six months, guys, I've been training with this. Um, I've owned plenty of bedrolls in my life. In fact, I believe that if you don't own a bedroll, you're wrong. Don't kill me. That's just my opinion. And um, this one right here for the price has been my favorite. Um, in fact, uh, you will see a lot of Big Sky's design in my personal product line that's coming out along with the pack at a certain point. Now, I wanted to go ahead and roll this out real quick and tell y'all a little bit about my sleep system. Um, hopefully this all stays in shot. I'm going to come down here and um, roll that guy out. Looking like he might not all be in shot. Let's see if we can pan him down. Boom. Enough. Okay. Well, <clears throat> recently I've been gifted a um, poncho from uh, Blackie Thomas. This is the uh, one win poncho, so I do actually carry that. And um, I also have my uh, nice thick wool blanket in here in conjunction with my sleeping net for the summer months. It's back in here. And I also carry a nice sleep pad. This is my, you know, go out and have a great time bag. This is my, I'm going to pull up in a car and um, I want to go ahead and just throw something up bag. Now, I'm also testing this new one win poncho piece, but we will talk about that later. Um, test one is going to be today, actually, in the rain, or excuse me, test two. I already slept in it for about four nights as a shelter. And I will now be sleeping in it again in rainy weather as a shelter, as well as testing it out in the rain today. It's supposed to keep raining. But um, before we get too far off topic, I'm going to set that aside. Guys, the one wind brand stuff is really good. And uh, this Big Skies, I was really nervous of purchasing this up front. And um, in the past six months of sleeping in this Joker, I have not been disappointed. Um, this thing is probably one of the most comfortable bedrolls I've slept in. And as you can see, it started out bleach white and it is now kind of brown. Uh, it's because I've used the mess out of it, of course. And um, on one side, it is zipped down. On the other side, it is not. Why does that matter for us as the outdoorsmen? Well, this affords us the ability with this big, fat, nice zipper um, to, one, be able to maneuver this with thick gloves on. As you can probably see, this big, fat zipper. It, it doesn't matter what angle. Let me look at this. It doesn't matter what angle this is at. It's going to unzip for you. It's also going to hold, it's going to load bear all that weight of you tossing and turning in your bedroll. You may pick this thing up. You may, you know, you're going to obviously expand the bedroll itself. And um, one thing that I did bring up that I did have a minor issue with was in this area right here, I would have loved to have seen something put on here that I could clip this to. So that way at nighttime, once you're sleeping, this doesn't unzip. Uh, that does tend to happen a little bit, but I have a solution for that. Um, I actually reached out to the manufacturer and talked to them about it. And they, they have sewn this space right here in. And what I'm going to end up doing is sending a little bit of cordage here. And putting a very, very small D-ring right there so that I can just clip this guy closed and he can't unzip in the night. And that will solve that problem. Now, I did reach out and say that they might want to include something like that already on the bag. I don't know if they'll ever do that. Regardless, it's still a great, it's still a great bedroll. And um, it does shed rain very well. Uh, dew and rain have never permeated this. When I first got it, I was worried about this seam down here. But I'm going to be frank with y'all. This side of my bedroll was left out at the bottom of my tarp one night, and it poured for about 12 hours. Uh, I was dry, and that seam was completely fine. I didn't have any issues down there. Now, of course, after a little while, I started to feel a little bit of dampness, 
but I never got wet. Um, and that's and that's if you work with canvas, you'll you'll notice that dampness after a little while. Um, the seams on this thing is very very good. The canvas is very very durable. You can throw this directly on the ground. In fact, for the entirety of the Silver Wolves classes, I threw this directly on the ground. And uh, you're actually looking at my sleep system from the Silver Wolves classes. I had my wool blanket in there, uh, four inch pad, and um, up here I just stuffed my extra clothing. And that's one big thing I wanted to talk about is this head flap here, which is quite robust and quite cumbersome in size, can hold my haversack on the left side, two pairs of clothes on the right, and my pillow in here, and I still have comfortable space. If I wanted to, I could take one of those two items out, put them in here with me, and that will give me the ability to put my face under this if it's nice and uh, maybe like a little dewy out. That get your face out of there. Um, the first night of the Silver Wolves classes, I actually slept with this just out under the stars, didn't have anything up under me. I woke up with uh, with a little bit of icy on me, um, and I was completely nice and dry and warm. So, love this bag. Um, the dimensions I will leave exactly right here on the on the channel, or excuse me, on the screen, and. Um, Guys, you know, it's a simple bag, so I don't have too much to say about it, but I can tell you this, I cannot find really any reason for you not to buy one. 150 bucks gives you something that's going to protect your $200 blanket, your $100, you know, pad of whatever design you want, all of your clothing, your haversack can fit in there. Uh, you know, if you really think about it, like I just did earlier, and like I do with my other stuff, this right here is a sill nylon tarp. And I usually put my GD tarp in here, but I've recently been, um, I got a new canvas tarp. And so I've been running that for the better half of the year. And uh, it still rolls up in here pretty nice. But you can throw a shelter like this, which will fit perfectly your bedroll in here so that if you ever don't need it, you can just stuff it in here and use it as part of your blanket or set it under your pad and you won't even know it's there. You know, and then you can turn around and use it when you need it. Um, this, this thing is very, very well designed. Now, a lot of folks have been asking me about, um, you know, how I roll it up because in my previous videos, I rolled it up and I carried it around in transit. And I'm going to be completely honest with you all. This is my conveyance bag. Um, and when I first purchased it, I took it on three hikes and used it as a bag. I rolled it up with all my essentials in it and then used my haversack for my you know, for my essentials, I'm sorry, and I put my food and stuff in here. And while that's capable of being done, this is a car camping bag. This is a off horseback kind of bag, maybe an ATV uh, canoe would be great. This would be great for a canoe because of how it rolls up. It's actually, uh, that's one of the big abstract ways about this bag that I love is it actually waterproofs itself. Okay, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, but this is definitely a bag you carry when you have some sort of conveyance, uh, even a bicycle or whatever will work, pack horse, uh, a sled, but you don't want to have to actually put this on your back and walk any long distances. I have sleep systems specifically designed for that, that I carry. And, um, I am not the kind of person to spend every single night under one bag. Um, you know, if I'm going on a hike, I'm going to carry a lighter system. If I'm going out on a car camping adventure, I'm going to carry this. If I'm going canoeing, probably going to carry this. You know, this is my long adventure, need good sleep, teaching a class, uh, or just that kind of stuff. If I'm going out to experiment, if I'm going out on a trail, on a trek, I'm probably going to carry like a check three piece system or just a simple bed roll, um, a wool blanket with my bed tick. I carry that a lot in the summertime. I showed you all that earlier in the year, but this guy right here is like my hold, no stops, get the best night's sleep you've ever gotten with a cold. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's robust. It's wide. A lot of people, my dad is 380 pounds, six, three and fits in here comfortably. I'm 240 pounds, excuse me, 230 pounds, 5'11", And I fit in here perfectly. I, I have room to spare and I can move around. I can fit a wider pad in here. Um, I can't ask for much more. You know, this is the most comfortable sleep system I own right at the moment. Okay. And I own a lot of sleep systems. In fact, we'll be talking about all of them here soon on the channel because it's getting a little bit colder. Now I know it's already cold where you're at, but here in the South, we have days like last week when we talked about my, um, 
what I carry, my little poncho liner system, which is my favorite trekking device or my favorite trekking um, sleep system. That was cold. Now I'm sitting out here in 60 degree weather while it's raining. It's just how the South is. Every other day, it changes from 30 to 60 to 20 to 30 to 50 to 70. Heck, last week we had a day that was 78 degrees and rainy. And then yesterday it was 31 degrees. So like, that's what I love about the South is you just can't be prepared enough. You know what I mean? You always have to be able to adapt to your environment. And that's something you can do out here. Well, that's something you have to do out here. And that's what this bag can do is, you know, you put your nice wool blanket. And, and mind you, this the, the bed roll itself is 150 bucks. You can get that on Amazon Prime sent right to your door. Or you can call them and get it for $140. I don't know what the shipping is because I got it off Amazon. Um, but like I said, y'all, you know, you can start using different stuff as you get better as a woodsman or a woodswoman and, uh, figure out what works for you in those regards. Now, what I was talking about earlier with the, uh, waterproofing and roll up is most bed rolls roll up from bottom to top. So you come to the bottom of your bed roll, your head was up here, you roll forward to your head. Well, what happens is with those type bedroll systems, they typically don't have this uh, like pillow slit sleeve because those type of bedrolls are designed for field use. Those are designed to be standalone shelters, if you will. Okay, this guy is a convenience shelter. Uh, it's a, I consider it a shelter assistance, a, a comfort item. Okay, and so when you do have a legitimate rain, but you still need to traverse through whatever, they made it so that you actually roll your head, you flip your head over like so, where you cover up that seam, and now you're automatically waterproof. Now, when I say waterproof, I don't mean like submersible. I mean like if it rains at all, your stuff's not going to get wet. It's not going to. If it's in the canoe, it's not going to get wet. Now, if you flip the canoe, well, you can do that to yourself, right? But you roll this guy up, I'll show you, like so. Nice and conveniently. And I'm not going to really even try. I'm just going to let it roll. And um, boom, you're rolled up. Now, another thing I love about this is the fact that it is very long. A lot of the bed rolls on the market today for the outdoorsmen are designed for transit, like, like foot transit, for foot traffic, excuse me, like the one that I'll be designing. This one here, again, is designed for conveyance. And they have the cowboy in mind. They have the horseback guy in mind. You're going to go on a four-day trip to the Montana Rock or to the Montana Mountains or something like that. Or uh, you're going to go out to Wyoming. Or you may even be doing work out there and um, choose to carry something like this. In fact, there were some instances when I was cowboying that I would have slept in this. Um, more often than not, you do want a standalone shelter for that kind of stuff. But again, you're out having fun. You're not working. You're not looking to be working all day and then throw your bed rock, go to sleep, get up in the morning, do it again. You're looking to recreate. You can probably bring some sort of tarp shelter or if you're packing, bring some sort of actual wall tent. Um, and this will fit nice and comfortably on your horse. And because they give you these straps the way that they are, you can loosen this up and allow it to bend over the back end of your horse, which is something I liked about it. Uh, whereas you're not trying to put, you're not putting really a pressure point on the center of your horse's hind end. Uh, that'll make their kidneys bleed. And since you can't really fit too, too much in here, this can't get heavy enough to cause kidney bleed in your horse with your saddle or with your uh, saddle bag. So if that's something you're worried about, this is a good guy to go with. And um, yeah, go ahead and get yourself one if you haven't already. If you're looking at buying a bedroll, uh, this you can't really go wrong with this. Like I said, it's not a uh, storm shelter, but it is very good for sleeping under a tarp, sleeping, you know, on a cot, sleeping on the ground with a tarp over you, um, wall tents, the whole nine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.